Hi everyone, welcome back to Hickory House Homestead. My name is Sarah and today you can see that the weather did indeed get cold. We got the, the below freezing temps that the weather was calling for and the small beds that we tended to in the last video are indeed covered in snow and so I'm so happy that we were able to get the root systems of those flowers and herbs covered so that they were protected and not suffering even though it is still a very beautiful sunny snowy day. These are the beds that we worked on. We added the compost and manure and potting soil to these two beds. And so that'll create a little bit of a buffer between the cold, the frost, the snow, the root systems of those plants. Anyway, I came out here to get a little bit of sunshine and to brave the cold, take our little compost container out, dump it in the compost, and refill the bird feeder. Come with me. don't have much in here this time, just some strawberries that were going bad, maybe a banana peel. We've got Quite a few tracks in the snow. Lots of animal friends. I am off work today. My boyfriend, Will, uh, a little over a month ago, he fell off of a ladder while he was um, working on his addition to his workspace. He was putting up flashing. And he ended up with three separate fractures. And I, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly, but he had two pilon fractures and his fibula was completely broken. So. From what I understand and from what the surgeon has been saying, it's a pretty severe injury. <clears throat> he had an external fixation device put on his right ankle and he's had a couple surgeries already. He's off work and so it's been quite busy trying to tend to the injury itself, make sure that it gets um, properly healed and tending to Will, but this morning he had his first non-hospital follow-up appointment with the surgeon to get his sutures removed and um, just to, to get the cast off, check up on the injury, see how it's healing post-surgery, and it's doing, it's doing well, and he's on the mend, but um, I, I took the day off because I needed to. <laughs> And I'm really lucky to have such a refreshing sunny day at home today. So I'm, I'm just looking forward to doing all these small tasks that I don't really get to do normally during the middle of the day or in the daylight, like take the compost out or I'm about to go refill the bird feeder 
and you can come along with me for that too. This is the bird seed I got. I got it from the Ace Hardware right up the road from the house. The birds seem to like it better than the selections I chose the last couple times. So the main reason I brought you along with me today is actually to plant the lettuce in those two terracotta pots that you saw in the last video <clears throat> that I'm going to keep inside. I'm going to grow them in the kitchen window and see how they do, kind of be a countertop harvest sort of deal. I don't know if it'll work or not. It should be cold enough like chilled enough near the window for the lettuce to do well. It's not too warm in our house and it'll be nice to have some fresh greens, some baby, baby greens, baby lettuce. And uh, so that's what we'll be doing next. So these are the terracotta pots I picked up at our local Home Depot a couple days ago over the weekend. And the one issue that I'm going to have is since I want these to be countertop planters is that they do have holes in the bottom. There were not um, terracotta trays that would fit under this shape or size at the store. I looked at a few stores. There were no plastic trays, even though I prefer to not use plastic. I don't think it looks as nice. Um, but I did find at our local Ace Hardware a makeshift solution for the countertop um, as far as drainage goes and absorbing any potential water that might leak through <clears throat> when I water the lettuce. And it is the little cork discs that typically are for underneath round potted plants. I thought that I could put two small round cork discs under each one of those and it would also serve as a little bit of padding underneath the terracotta planter on top of the countertop so multi-purpose i ran inside real quick to get the there you can see a little better now i ran inside to get the cork discs so that i could show you so I chose these small cork discs and I got four of them since I have two terracotta pots with two holes in each pot. And I really think they're going to be great. So they will absorb any water that leaks through. Not that the countertop needs protected, but 
so I don't have water all over my countertop. I shouldn't be overwatering that much anyway, but just in case. And then it'll almost be like little feet for the pot on top of the counter. So I think that should work out pretty well. We're doing this outside in the first place because I am definitely going to get dirt everywhere. <laughs> so I didn't want to do it on the kitchen countertop. The hose is probably frozen. Lettuce seeds are so delicate and so small that you literally can lay them on top of the dirt and they will germinate. You don't have to cover them. Ideally, when you lay those seeds down, you want the dirt to already be wet. You don't want to water those small delicate seeds after you've placed them on top of the dirt because the water is going to displace them. It'll either wash them away, it, it'll make all of the seeds concentrate in one or a few areas. You want them to be evenly dispersed. You don't want the water to displace them. So ideally watering first before laying down the seeds would be the best option in my opinion and experience. And since I can't use my hose outside to do that, I'll probably have to run in and grab a measuring cup of water or something that I'll moisten the dirt with before we lay down any seeds. The other issue we have is that I left these natural and organic potting mix plus fertilizer bags outside and they're a little bit frozen. Hopefully I can break those up, all right. I am not going to worry about cleaning these out. I know some people will clean out any of their pots, plastic or otherwise, with bleach water. I don't really use bleach in my home if I can help it or any strong chemical cleaners. And so I definitely don't want to clean a porous pot with that chemical either. So I'm just going to use them as is. I'm gonna take off any of the labeling that might have came with them from the store. All right, I think we're good to go in the pots. We're gonna try to break up the dirt a little bit. I probably should have brought these inside the house with me. Honestly, I didn't know it was going to snow. I knew it was going to get cold, but I didn't know we were going to get a little bit of snow. So I'm going to fill up the pots, not to the top because when I water, I don't want the water to spill over, but almost to the top. Now for the water. This is actually <laughs> mountain spring water for the last three or so years. My boyfriend, Will, and I, we um, haven't been drinking water out of the tap. We have been going up to one of the local state parks. They have a spring up there. Since I have the mountain spring water, that's what I'm going to use. I think it's probably healthier for the plant. Just my guess. I could be wrong, but it's what I'm going to use. Since I don't have an empty spray bottle, that's probably what I would choose to use over anything is a little spray bottle. Um, I would just soak the soil initially with a spray bottle of water until it's very moist. Since the hose is probably frozen and I don't have an empty spray bottle, I'm just going to gently pour it on. I'll probably have to fix the dirt before I put the seeds on, but gardening is all about using what you have and there is no necessarily right way. There's more than one way to do things. Use what you have. Experiment. Gain experience um, through doing. 
and through failing and through succeeding. So I'm just gonna dri drizzle this on a little bit. It's probably gonna leak all over the table. I'm gonna stop there and kind of move that all around. This dirt was similar to the potting mix that we used on the beds outside. This is a bagged potting mix that wasn't even outside in a bag. It was inside a store in a bag on a shelf. So it's probably extra dry and needs rehydrated. So it's seed time and I have two lettuce options as far as seeds go. One I just picked up at Ace when I picked up the cork discs and that is the Livingston Lettuce Select Salad Blend. The other lettuce option I have was actually a free seed from Baker Creek Heirloom Seeds. Uh, a lot of times whenever you place an order for seeds through Baker Creek, depending on how much money you spend, they'll send you one. This time I think I got two packets of free seed and I probably wouldn't have chosen this lettuce on my own. So it's cool that I got it as a free seed packet because I might end up loving this, but this lettuce is the Merlot lettuce. And I want to note that I am going to be seeding very heavily in each of these terracotta pots. The reason being, I want to harvest a lot of these leaves as baby greens, and so I'm not going to allow them to grow as large as I would if I were trying to grow individual heads of lettuce. So let's get to it. A couple things I want to mention, um, and it might be because this is a packet of free seeds, Maybe there aren't as many seeds in the free seed packet as one of the regular lettuce packets. I'm probably going to try ordering uh, a regular packet of these and um, see if there were more seeds in a regular paid for packet from Baker Creek of the Merlot lettuce. But this Livingston Lettuce Select Salad Blend from Ace Hardware has so many seeds in it, like so many more seeds. I probably won't eat all of this lettuce this year. Um, and then I also wanted to note, I noticed on the back that this blend is a mixture of 20% crimson butter, 20% red salad bowl, 20% iceberg, 20% bib, and 20% Lala Rosa. So that should be interesting. The only other thing I'm going to do now is lightly press the seeds into the dirt, the moistened dirt. Again, I don't think that I did this the ideal way. Um, I probably should have taken a large tote with dirt that wasn't half frozen, mixed it up with the water so that the potting mix was moistened entirely the entire way down into the pot um, and so that it wasn't as clumpy. And I'm sure you saw in the time lapse that I was trying to break apart the chunky pieces of dirt. Normally potting mix isn't chunky like that or it shouldn't be. And it's probably because I left it outside in below freezing temps. So that is one way to improve this process. Um, the other way is to moisten the dirt in its entirety 
and I really wish I had an extra straight spray bottle because I would have liked to really dampened the top layer of dirt before laying those seeds down. So that's what I would probably suggest to anybody that isn't just panic planting lettuce on their day off. Um, but I'm sure that this will likely grow and so it's going to be okay. Um, and hopefully we'll have a lot of harvest from it. The only other thing to do is to move them inside. I'm gonna put them right beneath the kitchen window. And I am going to probably stop at a store to pick up a water bottle because how I'm going to be watering the soil until I see um, the seeds germinate is by spray bottle. I want a very delicate light mist to dampen these top layers of soil. guys so that's pretty much it lettuce germinates relatively quickly so it's I'm not gonna be waiting weeks for those seeds to germinate I'm just gonna have to keep the soil slightly damp make sure that they're not too cold not too warm um, basically just leave them there in the window on the countertop and you know spritz them whenever the dirt looks a little bit dry um, everything else is just clean up and I have to remember to take the compost bin back in the house. Anyway, thank you for joining me today. Bye. So I don't know if you can tell, but the lettuce seeds are sprouting. I'm so excited. I think it's only been like two, three days. roots right into the dirt. These ones are the Merlot lettuce from Baker Creek. So exciting.